Hi, this is Sue. I'm just going to show you the Volcano and Discovery app. Many of you do not have computers that I know of, and I also thought I will show you on how to use apps and have them set up so that you can help yourself with forecasting using the DutchSense method. So you want to look at the last 48 hours and you need to find your silent zones and you use the map with arrows that I have very frequently posted on Facebook. Um, so use that arrows map for reference. And so this app I find is best actually to look for silent zones and the last 48 hours on the map. But you need to do some things to set it up first. So make sure when you first download this, do not set your location as it will only show earthquakes within your location. You need to monitor globally and then learn and see the patterns around the world uh, before they can reach you. So get to know your planet, and get, to, get to know the global movement uh, and then you can become familiar with the detail of what happens in your area. So first of all, look out for my white dot, that's my finger. So I'm on the list section here, which shows the earthquake reports. This map is very useful so that you can learn where your earthquakes are. Red circles are the earthquakes um, in the last 24 hours. But of course we need the last 48 hours and I will show you this. These are volcanoes here. Uh, red means they're currently erupting, I think, and then yellow and green, I guess, is dormant. Oh, actually, I'll come back. <laughs> but I, I don't check these very much. So, um, so, and the diamonds are felt reports. So we just had a magnitude six in Philippines. And I th I'm pretty sure it's stronger, actually. There's lots of reports. Um, and, yeah. So, there's the maps. In the news, this is the volcano reports. Now, this is a different list to what Dutch Sense is checking. There are two ways of checking, and it's good to check both. Um, for volcano reports, he checks. The one he has is more thorough, and it has multiple reports in one day and repeated ones whereas this is only a summary of each day um, of the key eruptions of the day so sometimes there's things missing on this list and there's also sometimes things missing on the other list so it's good to check both now so when we download this it's set to 24 hours monitoring so we want to change this to um, go to your three dot settings here and then go to two days okay and that will help um, you see on the map of the four last 48 hours of earthquakes so I shall show you this now you should see orange circles can you see now red circles are the last four, 24 hours Orange circles are the last 48 hours. So Philippines has just had a magnitude 6. And I can see that the Philippines, uh, Manila, I think, is a silent zone because this earthquake here and this earthquake here happened before the Philippines 6 happened. So this one was yesterday and this one was also yesterday. And so there's a silent zone in the middle. We also had two deep earthquakes here. You can see, um, oops, just south of Japan, this um, is 489 kilometers deep, and this one here is 480. We have also had numerous deep earthquakes in Fiji that are quite large, so I think this might be one of them. Oh, that's a semi-deep at 2.13. Not that one, that was too shallow. I 
think this might be no I can't it's in the last set um within the last week we've had um near five deep earthquakes um so that would disturb everyone as well um okay so yes looking out for your silent zones use the arrows map and look for two earthquakes and the space in the middle so for example there's a silent zone here and there's another silent zone here and there's another there's a big silent zone here but this place is quite difficult to forecast because uh, they're not very clearly reported it's another one here and another one here okay i hope that works so and it, um with the arrows it goes clockwise around the ring of fire so it goes this way um okay hope that helps um just to go through settings again so we have it set to last two days um worldwide i have it from magnitude three upwards because if it's too small it's too many earthquakes to monitor but in your local location monitor all size um because i monitor globally i i just do general monitoring because i live in somewhere that has no earthquakes so i just kind of look for big ones that can hurt people and i do what i can to to send out warnings but you you really need to forecast yourself because of this example of me living far away I can't do everything for you in Norkin Dutch, but he's done a great job in teaching, and this is what we need to share. So um, when you first download this app, do not set your location so that you monitor global earthquakes. Um, these are all the settings I have, so you can just copy these. And... Notifications will also be useful. So this is what I have selected for global monitoring. Of course, you can change this for your location. And I think that oh, map settings, there you go. And I think that's it. Okay, hope this helps. I may do a more detailed one on settings where I explain which one, what, what everything means. And I'll hopefully use YouTube to translate this video as well.